families, creating a lifetime of memories. Sadly, some families are denied these important moments due to the sad practice of alienation. These are Families Divided. Hello, and welcome to this week's edition of Families Divided. I'm Elaine Cobb, your host. I'm also founder and president of Family Access Fighting for Children's Rights. Family Access Fighting for Children's Rights brings you this bi-weekly program in hopes and prayers that you're learning much, that it's helping you in many ways. It's giving you much knowledge and support through this hell on earth called alienation. Please email us and let us know your thoughts on this program. We would really appreciate that. In this segment, Dr. Carol Golly will be interviewed by Dr. Colleen Murray. She'll be speaking to you on the psychology of the child. If you've noticed in recent weeks, we've spoken a lot on what alienation is doing to the children and how important it is that we pay attention to them, their needs and their thoughts going through this. Alienation is abuse, plain and simple. Children should have access to all family members, including their parent, both sides of their grandparents, their aunts, uncles, and cousins. They're being deprived of their family, which is wrong and abuse. And not only, as Dr. Carol Golly would tell you, does it affect them now, this affects them for the rest of their life. They're scarred and it doesn't need to be this way. I hope you'll learn much in this segment. Also, we're having two of our presenters speaking to you that will be speaking at our conference and they're gonna be sharing with you some of the things that they'll be speaking about. We've got an awesome lineup at this in-person only conference and we are so excited that it's gonna be held in North Carolina. I do hope you're gonna be able to join us. We're in uh, specials now and the pricing. So I hope you'll be able to register and join us. We're really excited. You'll get to meet with 10 of the top professionals. They're all-star professionals in the world of alienation and you'll get to speak with them one-on-one. -on -one. Also, you'll be one-on-one -on -one with many other people who are going through the same thing you are. And it's gonna be great to spend these three days together and just enjoy each other's company, share each other's thoughts and feelings, and also make new friends. Looking forward to you being with us. We'll bring all this to you right now, right after these messages. In families dealing with alienation, communication during conflict is often very difficult. This fall, Family Access, Fighting for Children's Rights, will present a special in-person conference to address that very issue. Using and Refining Interpersonal Skills will be held September 9th through the 11th at the Marriott Research Triangle Park in Durham, North Carolina. You'll learn from experts how to master skills that can reduce anxiety, anger, and stress in alienation situations. Join event director Elaine Cobb, the founder and president of Family Access Fighting for Children's Rights, and conference moderator Dr. Colleen Murray as they present a lineup of highly respected experts, including keynote speaker Dr. Jeffrey Gardier, plus presentations by Bill Eddy, Megan Hunter, Dr. Joshua Coleman, Dr. Mark Moss, Dr. Mary Alvarez, Dr. William Burnett, Dr. Sue Cordbluth, Shazia Sparkman, and Lisa Rothfuss. Mark your calendar now, September 9th through the 11th, for Using and Refining Interpersonal Skills, hosted by Family Access, Fighting for Children's Rights, Steel Partners Foundation, and PAICA. Parental alienation is child abuse. Visit familyaccess.info for more details on the conference and secure your attendance. Seating is limited. At Victor's Crown, our focus is on you, our clients. When you arrive, our goal is that you will feel at home from our welcoming atmosphere to our serene surroundings. 
Everything we do at Victor's Crown is done with our clients in mind. We have comfortable seating areas for both adults and children. A large screen TV with surround sound where clients can be occupied with wholesome entertainment while they wait. We offer complimentary refreshments such as coffee, tea, water, and snacks. Due to the present COVID pandemic, our in-person appointments are restricted to selected cases. And those are held in our luxurious outdoor open air meeting space that we affectionately refer to as the COVID cabana, which was built specifically for our clients to offer them the most comfortable and relaxing outdoor space available. All our other clients are offered secured web-based telemed sessions where they can connect with us from anywhere in the world. Hello and welcome to this panel segment of Families Divided. Today I will be talking with Dr. Carol Golley about the psychology of the alienated child. Some of you may have learned about parental alienation from prior episodes. So during this panel, we're gonna be talking about how alienation affects the children. Welcome, Carol. It is a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you very much. Dr. Murray, it's, it's a pleasure to be here with the Families Divided segment today. Great. Well, let's just jump right in. Could you please briefly share with us um, the phenomenon of parental alienation? Certainly. So parental alienation is something that we normally see um, in the context of a divorce. It can happen during marriage. Um, but it's generally in a divorce or post-divorce where uh, a child is turned by one parent against the other parent uh, through a kind of strategies that um, involve what we call brainwashing and programming. Um, and it uh, creates the impression that one of the parents, which is a rejected parent, is dangerous or not safe or crazy. And, this is the messaging that the child, child receives. So um, it is often used to, to kind of gain favor in custody decisions or just to vent the anger of a favored parent, which it can be referred to also as the alienating parent. Uh, and it doesn't make sense because the justification for uh, the negativity is not realistic. The, these these uh, parents, you know, pass a lot of information on to the children, encouraging them to reject the uh, the rejected parent. And so, in, in in severe situations, the child, or moderate to severe situations, the child can can completely reject visiting the uh, rejected parent, and it's 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 very sad because it's very difficult to intervene in these in these situations. And it seems to be more common because we believe that there could be about 11 to 15% of divorces which end up in this situation. Wow, well, those uh, statistics and, and those realities are just startling. And for anybody that uh, is just recently joining us today, I think that gives them a good foundation from which to springboard the rest of this conversation. And so Carol, as we look at parental alienation, can you share with our viewers, what does this type of parental interaction, what are the effects that this has on a child? Yes, they're, they're very serious, these effects. They, they have the same effects of any other type of child abuse and parental alienation is, is widely accepted as being a form of child abuse. So uh, the research um, shows that um, 
The psychological damage can depend on a number of factors, including the child's age, uh, the intensity of the alienation, uh, the length of time for which it uh, continues. And also if there is, uh, it depends if there's ever a termination to the alienation, because sometimes they're not and it's a lifetime, sadly a lifetime issue. Um, it also depends on the internal resources and resiliency of the child, because we know that some children can be more prone to, to the effects of alienation and because of inner resources, some, child, some children, perhaps in the same family, are sometimes better able to resist. Uh, but there is a, a, a price paid to children when they are put in the middle of such manipulation, sadly. And these effects can uh, be both cognitive or th in their thinking, and it can also be in their emotional um, development. Uh, and so infants and toddlers are too young to really understand what's happening with brainwashing and program programming, but they can react to the emotional climate in the home. So in other words, if there's a great deal of anger in one of the homes and negativity towards one of the parents. So even young children feel that. They may not understand it, but, but they can feel it internally. And, and that can have effects on their development that are quite negative. Uh, and so healthy, children need healthy connections with both parents to develop appropriately and to be able to relate relationship-wise to the world the rest of their lives. So these healthy attachments are very important. And if a child is prevented from at attachment with a formerly loved parent, that is very, very damaging. And a child in that case uh, may withdraw more into themselves and give up their tasks of childhood, which for Young children are things like learning their place in, in the social world, learning how to make friends, uh, being able to control their bodies more with toilet training and gross motor skills. And, and those kind of things can be affected. Speech and language can be affected and, and it can cause delays in those areas. For older children, uh, such as adolescents, it can affect their self-sufficiency in life because they may stay overly dependent on a parent who is the, um, uh, I'm sorry, the favorite parent. In other words, the alienating parent because they become very dependent on that person, much like a cult. They're, it's hard for them to, to meet the task of individuating and become their own person in, in, in cases where they're very dependent. On the, uh, on the favored parent. Also adolescents are learning to get along in the world and make, uh, make decisions about career and relationships. And I know that I, my, I worked as a child therapist and with children from really um, a year up to about 18. And when I first started seeing these cases, these kinds of situations, it was, very disturbing. And one thing I really noticed was the teenagers um, were so dependent on, on the person uh, per perpetrating the alienation that they would sleep in the same bed with them. They, they could not individuate and leave for college. They, um, you know, they were unable to really become their own person. It, so that's very handicapping and very serious in life. Also um, a child's view of uh, their parent can be very rigid. They are, they're very, it's very fixed thinking about the rejected parent. And, you know, these are parents that were formerly loved by the child. There's evidence that they were really close at one time. You can see that from their pictures and that sort of thing. And from what the rejected parent described and other family members described but children in these situations become to see, come to see the rejected parent is all bad and the favored parent is all good. And that's not normal. We, it's healthy in relationships to see good and bad in people. That teaches us to, to be accepting of, 
of other people in our lives and be successful in our families and work environments. So the black and white thinking is very uh, damaging to children. So, so it sounds like Carol, it sounds like what, what is a small in comparison to somebody's rest of their life? What is a small event, a divorce, right? Um, because of the situation that the children get into, this becomes a lifelong millstone around, if you will, around the children's neck. It it causes them significant difficulties uh, that will last them beyond that one or two years that the divorce may, may be in process in the courts. It This has the potentiality to change the very personage of of the children into who they become and who they marry and what they become. Yes, Dr. Murray, that that seems to be the case. And the research on long-term effects of alienation on children is in its early stages, but we do know uh, that that there are long-term effects and the manipulation of children psychologically and emotionally Um, can be linked to depression and antisocial behavior of the children later in life because they're taught to be very cruel. You know, they're they're extremely cruel to the rejected parent. Uh, And and this teaches them that uh, if you don't like somebody, you can just cut them off. And if they displease you, you can act in in cruel manners. Uh, There have been some studies where and also reports of adult children who were alienated when they were younger who report that it affected them in, in fairly serious ways that they suffered anxiety, depression, difficulty with relationships, maintaining relationships. Uh, and then they, when they reached milestones in their lives, such as they got married or they had children or maybe they became alienated in their lives, Uh, they had come to realization of what happened to them and it was quite devastating. And they realized they had difficulty maintaining relationships and and the cycle could be repeated with them. It's some indication that it could be intergenerational and the cycles can continue um, for generations of being alienated. So that's very concerning and very sad. Yeah, so it sounds like alienation really hones the skills of an antisocial personality, if you will. And even if they don't get the personality disorder, they get the traits of the personality disorder that are really well defined for them as they practice them through the permission of the authority figure that's supposed to be the gatekeeper against these things. Yes, that's true. These children become just devoted to the alienating parent uh, because they fear loss of love from that parent. Uh, they, they feel sympathy for that parent and they want to, in some cases, almost caretake that parent. And so they become afraid to show any love or approval of their, their other parent, which is the rejected parent who in most cases really didn't do anything wrong. They don't understand why they're, they become rejected. And so these are, these are very serious con- consequences for families uh, and, for, and for the children. And you're correct that there is association with, uh, with personality disorders uh, tending to become alienating parents uh, and, then, and then perpetrating ali- severe, moderate to severe alienation on their own children mm. and teaching them a lack of empathy. So these are really serious uh, consequences of of this phenomenon. Wow, that is that is just uh, just over the top, you know, uh, as some of our audience may be thinking about like, wow, you know, for the for the root of bitterness and resentment and and through the striving to have revenge on somebody, the child literally becomes the sacrificial lamb for this plight that this person has in life to to go and and cause destruction on the other parent. Yes, that's that's very true because people with personality disorders lack insight. So they may 
take, say, a court order parenting class that is often required in divorce in many states, I think most states, all states probably, which can be helpful for somebody to learn uh, that it's very damaging to children to be put in the middle and to be turned against another parent. But a parent with a personality disorder lacks insight into their, uh, their behavior and they're, they're, they're not as concerned with using their children in this way because everything becomes about them and they're wanting to punish the other parent for whatever wrongs they feel, whether it's the divorce or. Yeah. So I guess I, what I hear you saying is, is because these parents have a lack of insight, even if they do take the parenting courses, they don't even recognize that it's them that are doing these things or that need the course. Yes, that's, that's true. And they, uh, they don't tend to listen to professionals because in some cases therapists such as myself or other child therapists or family therapists or even you know people that do parenting evaluations for custody decisions it's it's very tricky because they they're only interested in convincing the child and anybody working with the family that the rejected parent is is bad right. and if you try to help the child become more critically thinking and problem solving and, and looking at these more things more re realistically. Uh, the parent, the rejecting parent, I'm sorry, I mean the favorite parent will just up their game and, yeah. and really, really continue to put pressure on the child even more severely. And they will fire therapists or other people that are more neutral in trying to help the family and assist them sure. uh, just to back off. So we have about maybe 30 seconds left, Carol. What, what is some parting things that you could share with our audience um, in the next you know, 25 seconds? Well, if you are a rejected parent, never give up. We know many cases of reunification, there's help through support groups. This is not your fault. Um, it can drive you crazy and into acting in ways that can kind of get you in a little trouble because this is not normal. It's not normal parenting. There's a lot of information out there on the family access, uh, fighting for children's rights website. And there's a lot of support available and don't give up because your children don't want you to deep inside. They don't want you to ever stop loving them and they need you. Divorce and co-parenting are a major life interruption for families, especially the kids, but also for parents and grandparents. And it's even worse in blame-filled, high-conflict cases. When parents engage in alienation by turning the kids against the other parent or grandparents, kids suffer. They're denied the opportunity to build the four big skills necessary for future resilience. New Ways for Families online class can help. Parents learn to use our popular Biff and Ear skills to calm the conflict and stop the hostile emails and texts. And we even have a class for kids and parents to learn together. Research shows a 75% improvement in joint parental decision making after this course is taken, plus overall improvements for kids' well-being. Don't wait to make this affordable investment in your children's future and improve your well-being too. Start learning new ways for your family today at conflictplaybook.com. Welcome to Contemporary Family, a global quarterly magazine providing professional resources and research for effective co-parenting. Be well informed of family policy changes around the globe. Learn new interventions to improve child outcomes. Read of children's rights and co-parenting advocacy. Change your perspective. We can improve child outcomes, together. International voices with shared purpose. Meet our regional ambassadors. Build resilience. Lead. Become an empowered family professional. Visit Contemporary Family. Hi everyone, it's Dr. Joshua Coleman. I'm a psychologist in private 
practice and author and speaker coming to you currently from the Bay Area. Uh, very excited to be invited to speak at this conference. My talk is going to be about the five most common mistakes that parents make uh, if they're alienated or estranged from their children, particularly their adult children. One of the things that I've learned in my private practice and in my webinars working with parents over the many, many years that I've been doing this is that there are a lot of things that we do kind of instinctively as parents in response to feeling alienated um, or estranged from our children that actually end up working against us. So I'm gonna talk about what those five most common mistakes are and how either to not make them, or if you're like most of us, you probably already have made them, but then how to repair repair them. I am Dr. Mary Alvarez. I am a psychologist in Texas. I practice out of the Austin and Houston areas, and I have been a former custody evaluator. And as such, I was involved with parental alienation in high conflict families in which parental alienation was being used as a tool or a mechanism to win custody, change custody and things of that nature. So I have been involved with the very worst of parental alienation situations and have seen firsthand the devastating effects on children, on families, and especially on the target parent, the parent for whom the alienation is, is targeted at that person and they struggle tremendously. And so I am excited to present in Durham this fall, a presentation concerning self-care because it's often overlooked for the target parent, all of their energy, all of their resources are going towards the legal case and towards fighting against allegations of parental alienation or abuse is more likely. To request prayer for your family, please email us at prayersforfamilies at gmail.com. Is there a subject you would like covered on Families Divided? If so, then send your email to requestsforfamiliesdividedtv at gmail.com. We are here to help you in your journey. Join us next week on Families Divided, when attorney Ashish Josie will discuss the role of the guardian ad litem and children's attorney in cases involving parental alienation.